Today, I'm going to go through my one-stop shop Fenrir build, and why it's probably a little bit different than yours. Hey everyone, Derpy here, and welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. Just to go ahead and get things started, I will mention that the build for this video is going to be shown in the Kixai hash code in the description down below. I do have a builds document, which I've got all the different builds I have linked for the past several holes, and I'm continually updating. This project is of course made possible by channel members, so click that join button below if you want your name on here now. Now let's go ahead and jump into the build. First things first, how many MDS-3s do you want to use on this ship? I have a very controversial answer, and that is that you want to use two on the entire fleet. Do not build what you have on the screen here in terms of the flagship. Now, you want to build two on the entire fleet for a few separate reasons. Let's go ahead and take a look at this right here. If you look at one MDS-3, you can see that it has a salvo of 10. This means that one MDS-3 MDS can deal with 10 incoming missiles at once. And missile defense systems work in a way that you shoot at each incoming missile or UAV once and exactly once. So if you have 20 MDS-3s on your fleet and you have one incoming missile, you still shoot at it exactly one time. Therefore, you should use the number of MDS-3s equal to the maximum number of incoming projectiles you expect to uh, come towards you, divided by 10. Now, what I'm going to go for on this entire fleet is I'm going to use two MDS-3s, but it is very important that you don't use them both on the same ship. That is, because while these do have a salvo of 10, it takes time, and it takes 0.2 seconds, between each MDS-3 being fired, meaning it takes an entire 2 seconds to empty out all your shots, and then roughly another 1 second to reload. Now, what this means is that if you have more than 10 incoming projectiles in 2 seconds, you're going to be overwhelmed. For this reason, I'm going to recommend that you have two regular ships, which are not the flag, that have MDS-3s on them, and exactly one each. If you would like to go with four or five total across the entire fleet and play it safe, you are more than welcome to. But as of right now, I currently intend to stick with just two, but have them on separate ships. That is what my current plan is, and we'll go ahead and see if that continues. And at this point, let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the build. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use as many limited weapons as you, as you have. Now the difference between the limited weapon and the regular weapon is actually very, very low. You can see all the stats are going to be exactly the same other than the damage, which jumps from 4,000 to 4.4k. In other words, a 10% benefit for using the limited weapon. I haven't really felt that this is worth it for me to go get an extra 20 million points, 22.5 million points in the raids, and for that reason, I don't have enough of these to equip even a single ship with all limited weapons. That's the sort of second reason here why my build is going to look a little bit different than yours. But if you do have the limited weapons, and I have gotten several shards through the Forsaken mission, you're going to want to use those. For now, I'll just put on sort of a mix of both just to show you what kind of build I'm looking for. But if you have the limited weapons already, they are better, so you want to use those. In terms of the armors, I'm just going to, going to go with a plain 2-2 two two from Corrosive and Penetrative. You could play around with this and say, actually, I take more of this damage, it's going to be Corrosive or Penetrative. Uh, I think I, it's actually a pretty even split this raid, but I'm usually, whatever one I guess, if I put on 3 Corrosive, it will be more Missile. If I put on 3 Missile, it will be more Corrosive. So I'm going to go with just 2-2. Two two. You could think about potentially using some of the Evade Armor on here, which also gives you Combat Speed, which I would probably do if I wasn't losing the bonus damage and also losing, uh, or also I'd be, you know, decreasing my repair efficiency because these D5 EV armors do take 8 minutes to repair. So that is something else to think about. So I'm just, just going to use two of each. Now the third reason here why my build's going to be a little bit different than yours is that I'm not using the newest engine. The newest engine is a tier 12 engine, which gives you 47,000 survival. Seems like a big number until you start doing the math and look at the tier constant of this ship. Now you'll notice that I don't own it. That's because I can see and notice that the evade is 15, combat speed's 110, turn speed's 150, and I can see that actually the one from last tier, the sort of sacrilege engine, tier 11.5, has the same evade, same combat speed, same turn speed, and gives up a whopping 12,000 survival, which is not a lot in today's game. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and use the one from the last raid, or last last half tier ago. There is no sort of bonus on losing that for corrosive damage, and that's perfectly fine by me at the same combat speed. Now you're probably using the better engine, because you probably have it, because it was probably worth the points to you, or you didn't look at it. In my case, it wasn't worth it, so I didn't get it. That's the old engine. It will also be available in the TLC coming later this month, so if you don't have that, you can sort of throw on the old one or just wait until that TLC comes out. In terms of special slot number two, this is going to be Corrosive Battery 3. If you don't have this, surprise, surprise, Corrosive Battery 2 is likely your next best option. I do try and give next best options for you for these builds here, in case you are a newer returning player and don't quite have the best thing out there. Corrosive Battery 2 is not going to be a horrible option. So let's go ahead and just throw that on there. You can see that the uh, damage is higher, you know, not significantly, but it is higher than Corrosive Battery 2, so you're probably going to want to use it, and every little bit does add up here. The third special slot, I'm going to continue to use something, the Centrifugal Loading System. If you don't have this uh, Twin Fang Feeder, which is a regular blueprint, actually I lied, it's uh, one of these limited ones again here, but this is tier 9, you can get it by scrapping old things. Uh, centrifugal loading system is the best thing for this one, it gives you multi-shot, gives you scatter gun reload, corrosive damage, all very very nice things, although the scatter gun reload is slightly less effective. Special slot number four is going to be a limited special, and this is the Chaff Splitter system. Tier 10 came out with the ships that did some DOT. I can't remember their name off the top of my head here. But the Chaff Splitter system is really, really useful because it gives you three very important stats and one that's kind of okay. First of all, you have multi-shot, which is nice because it does give you a bonus there. Uh, you, shoot, you have a multi-shot stat already on your weapons. This is going to increase your damage by 25%, which is pretty nice. The corrosive damage is, of course, just going to give you 20% help. You're going to do 20% more damage with it than without it, which is nice. And then the anti-missile accuracy is uh, okay. On, actually, the anti-missile accuracy is incredibly important. And you want to use the corrosive, uh, whatever sort of anti-penetrating special, which has the most anti-missile accuracy in the game here, which is plus 50% at the very bottom. The range is plus 75%. If you were to look at any other uh, anti-special in the game here, they're not going to have nearly as good anti-missile accuracy. You're just at 40% with the Petrarios defense system, and the other ones are even lower here. So already, you definitely want to use the Chaff Splitter system because of the anti-missile accuracy. The corrosive damage and the range and the multi-shot are all just nice additions to that in any case. Now, the really interesting thing is that this actually stacks with another anti-missile accuracy stat in the game, which is going to be very, very powerful, and that is the Iron Fur Plating. If it weren't for that, I would not be using this, but it, it exists, so I'm going to use it. The anti-missile accuracy of plus 20% is incredibly helpful because it stacks, and as I mentioned in the first minute of this video, you shoot at each incoming missile, UAV, etc. once and exactly once with MDS-3s. Gales are said to not work against that, that's an entirely different topic for an entirely different video, don't use gales on the ship. Now you want to use this here, it's very very helpful because stacking anti-missile accuracy is, is incredibly powerful in today's game, and this special is going to be one we use on every assault hole which has a countermeasure for the next few years, at least that's kind of what I'm thinking. The minus spread is pretty good here because it will let your, your scatter guns focus more tightly on their target. They do have pretty bad splash, all things considered, so you want to reduce the spread and increase the splash as much as possible. Corrosive damage plus 20% is of course nice, while the anti-missile accuracy we already talked about. The uh, evade bonus is okay if you are getting hit on these back four ships. I will address the flagship in just a little bit here. And corrosive survival is okay. I'm not looking at 30k and thinking that that is an incredibly powerful number. Now special slot number 6 is going to be an older one, just a regular blueprint right here. And that is another corrosive damage boosting special which is a little bit of an older, older, older one, but that's fine. You're going to be able to use it just fine in any case. And actually, let me go ahead and pull that up here. That is the Sulfuric Armor Piercing Rounds. Gives you projectile speed, corrosive damage, building damage, and wall damage. Something like... Um, there, there are some other older ones that would be okay for this instead. 
this immediately started out of the high volatility cartridges, which is the next step you're going to want to use here. For the iron for platine, you're probably just better off with a GLD system. Four, if you must use that one, or GS3 is actually better because it has lower build time. Although I did consider Hyper 30 in this spot instead, didn't really want to do that because the damage you're losing is, is just too high for that to be effective. Hyper 30 was a thought for combat speed here. Actually, I even thought about something like Nuclear Accelerators 3, if that's the correct special here, which gives you splash as well as combat speed is something I thought, thought about. Was a, Nuke Excels 2 was the one I was thinking of here. You know, it gives you splash, which will help your scatter guns, and gives you combat speed, but I couldn't justify the damage loss, among other things, for this particular uh, special here. Thought about it, elected to not use it. But uh, if you want to stick with a standard build, this is immediately replacing the uh, Zinth Bolster Bow was the um, immediate replacement of this special as an escalation on that. Although I never really liked this one instead. I like just plain old GS3 better than that. Um, at least those were my thoughts on that. And then in terms of the CIC, it does fit in terms of the weight. I did check that before posting this, uh, even if you have all of these different corrosive things, is that you do just want the CIC that came with the ship. It is in the Forsaken mission. You don't need to worry about that. That's my plan. That's my build here. And I'm electing to go for two MDS-3s on the entire fleet, one on, the, one on just a regular ship, one on a second one that comes out, likely the flagship for me at this point. I'm not quite sure on that one yet. The flagship will be interesting because a ton of these things, a ton of these um, turrets in the raid have King Killer, which means that it's going to shoot at something with higher armor points. If the flagship build ends up having more than 28.2 million armor points and has 30 million, 30 million point two, you're going to want to make that into an extreme evade tank. And for that reason, you're not going to want to do anything other than put evade and combat speed on that ship and maybe some penetrative survival or something else like that. So that's what I'm going for. I'm going to see if I can put the two different MDS-3s on two of the back ships rather than the flagship, just so I have the option of building it as an evade tank if it does come out with more armor points. That's the plan, that's the build here. As things continue to progress and we get information on the flagship or other changes for this target, I'll go ahead and post an updated video. With that said, I want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone whose names appear on screen now. These are the channel members who are making videos and projects like my builds document possible. If you want your name on here too, click the join button below the YouTube. With that said, and until next time, this is going to be Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.